Ah, uh, extraction shooters. The concept sounds perfect. You dive into a high stakes game scavenging precious loot and if you're lucky, make it out alive. Games like Escape from Tarkov have taken this formula and turned it into something truly special, drawing in an audience that is hungry for intense risk versus reward gameplay. But as popular as Tarkov has become, plenty of other games in the extraction shooter genre have launched with high hopes only to fade out just as quickly. Why is that? And despite all the reasons, why do I believe this subgenre still has so much potential going forward? I was recently contacted by the fine people at XLab to help out with an upcoming extraction mode for their game Veil. Vale. They tasked me with the important mission of writing out something called a game design document, which is kind of like a piece of paper I can outline all my cool ideas and feel really smart without having to do any of the real work like coding and programming. Pretty sweet gig, I thought to myself, until I realized that they might end up actually considering some of my ideas. This began a spiral of long sleepless nights reflecting on how it could be the cause of the worst extraction shooter to ever hit the market. After all, I've never made a game before. What do I really know about what it means to come up with the ideas that wouldn't cause a great IP such as Veil vale to fade away like so many others? I just blew myself up with a grenade. This left me obsessing on the failure of these types of games being the great teacher it is. Why did these games fail? Today, I'll explore the core reasons these games struggle to survive in the genre that makes Tarkov such a hard act to follow. First and foremost, let's talk about core identity. Many extraction shooters fail because they lack a strong, distinct personality. Kind of like the person you know that has to tell everybody they meet they're vegan even though nobody fucking asked. Escape from Tarkov succeeded by giving players a brutal, hyper-realistic experience in a meticulously crafted world. It didn't just imitate other games, it created a hardcore, gritty environment where every bullet mattered, and realism was the priority. But infinitely more important was they had a story to tell, even before the game went into development. Crafting the lore meticulously in this way anchored them to stay true to their core vision. Many games in this genre try to emulate this formula but often fail to carve out a unique identity of their own. Take Cycle Frontier for example. While it offered a sci-fi twist on the extraction gameplay, it struggled to find a core identity that resonated strongly with players and after not even 4 years of the game being live went sunset and closed its servers indefinitely. Without that clear sense of what makes us different, games risk just becoming another faceless title and increase increasingly crowded genre. Another factor to consider is complexity, or more precisely, the wrong type of complexity. Tarkov leans into its complicated mechanics like ammo ballistics, weapon customization, and challenging health system, but every piece of complexity in Tarkov serves a purpose playing into the delicate ecosystem that drives the realism, the immersion, the harsh survival aspects, and of course the economy. Many games in the genre, however, throw in complex mechanics without fully integrating them into the gameplay loop. Marauders tried introducing mechanics like space ship dogfights before players could enter the map. As much as this was a unique and cool sounding idea on paper, it added an unnecessary layer that disrupted the core experience. For extraction shooters, complexity should enhance immersion, not detract from it. Games that fail here end up feeling like a mismatch of ideas rather than a cohesive experience. This is a part of the reason why Tarkov's map to map travel that was recently added to the game was seen as unnecessary, but now proves to be such a cornerstone element of the game by keeping you in the gameplay without loading out and loading back into raids. The insight on ideas like this and so many more prove why Tarkov is still on top in this genre after 10 years of still being in beta. Then there's pacing, the player flow, a massive challenge for extraction shooters. Extraction games are all about tension. For that tension to work, there needs to be downtime, suspense, and the constant possibility of danger. Tarkov nails this by creating maps that feel large and open but are designed to force player encounters. Players have to make tough decisions constantly, go for the high high value loot and risk exposure, or take a safer path and leave with less. Many games fail by making maps that are too small or too big, with limited player incentives to cross paths. Scavengers is one title that struggled here. Ever heard of it? If not, it's because the game shut down in 2022. Despite a promising concept and positive reception, the game's map structure and lack of high risk zones made encounters feel predictable or even optimal, breaking the crucial tension players seek in these games. I guess Tarkov's shitty spawn locations actually help with this by making the first 60 seconds of your raid fucking firefight to the death adding that 
that massive fuck you right before you can set off to accomplish what you came in for. Next, we come to reward structure. A good extractor shooter has to balance risk and reward just right. Players should feel that their time in game matters, that what they bring out impacts their next experience. Tarkov rewards players with a persistent stash where every item feels earned and useful, creating a powerful incentive to survive. Many unsuccessful titles, however, lack this feeling of progression. Games like Vigor tried to create a similar loop but fell short with a limited variety of high value rewards and progression that didn't feel satisfying over time. Without the right rewards, the grind becomes meaningless and players lose the motivation to come back for more. Needing three butt plugs and a used diaper in order to upgrade to a level one hideout does make for a better extraction shooter after all because everything has a use, everything matters. Oh, that's nasty. And finally, we have server stability and cheating. An unglamorous but crucial reason games in this genre fail. With the high stakes nature of extraction shooters, any technical issues can completely ruin the experience. <clears throat> Ugh. Tarkov has faced its share of stability and hacking issues, and while it still struggles at times, it managed to retain its player base by actively tracking these issues and communicating with its players. Many games that have to break into the extraction genre aren't equipped to handle the level of technical demand required. Whether it's poor anti-cheat systems, laggy servers, or game-breaking bugs, players are unforgiving. Games like SOS, which tried to deliver a competitive survival experience, were quickly abandoned when stability and rampant hacking made it unplayable. In a game where every moment counts, technical stability isn't just important, it's essential for survival. Tarkov's base edition being set at 40 bucks probably helps in some way, being that if your account gets boned for cheating, you are forced to buy a new copy of the game before you can jump back in. Not a perfect system, but adds an aspect of deterrent from the inbreds that cheat in video games. It leaves me wondering if games like Arena Breakout Infinite and Delta Force are ever going to manage these issues being that they're live service, and there's absolutely no incentive not to cheat from a monetary standpoint. So what does this all mean. It means that the extraction shooter genre is far more than just a list of features. For a game to succeed, it must combine these elements into a seamless, immersive experience. Escape from Tarkov didn't just check the boxes, it built a complete, unyielding world that leaves players with stories to tell. Games that fail often do so because they don't capture the full essence of what makes extraction shooters so unique. In the end, the appeal of extraction shooters comes from the intense, almost masochistic thrill of putting everything on the line. Games that succeed here under understand their audience deeply. They know that players want a real test of skill, patience, and risk management. They want a game that doesn't hold their hand, that challenges them to survive by any means necessary. So as we see more titles emerge in the space, remember that creating a successful extraction shooter isn't just about following a formula, it's about commitment to a vision, an uncompromising attention to detail, and maybe most importantly, a willingness to make players work for every inch of success. Only then can a game hope to survive in a genre as ruthless as the extraction shooter. And in this, I'm optimistic to say the least. I'm hoping that understanding what makes these games fail, I can avoid the common pitfalls when it comes to pitching my own ideas on how future iterations of the game should work. And being that these types of games are breaking into my favorite medium, virtual reality, I'm extremely excited to be a part of Veil's extraction mode in any way I can. The future of extraction shooters is looking bright. 